What are you presenting here at the conference? So I study blood flow during um, early stages of heart development and what's really cool about that is the actual blood flow during those stages actually help grow and shape the heart. So I'm researching how dogs drink water, um, how they laugh. I was here presenting my work on a numerical simplified human birth model. So I have a solid cylinder that is supposed to be a fake baby and I push it through a passive elastic tube and see what happens. So I study flow induced vibration of bluff bodies. <laughs> As air or water moves past um, something that's not like streamlined like an airfoil, uh, often those things shake back and forth naturally. So think of like if you have an old school car antenna that sticks up at the front of your car, it shakes back and forth. Uh, I'm here to present my work looking at how we can use jets to help underwater robots move around. So what we have is we have an inclination and uh, we make a mixture of a single density particle in a viscous fluid and we pour it down the uh, slope. You see like a ridge form at the very front creating what we call a shock. So we're studying these shocks. What is the coolest thing you've seen at the conference? I am going to have to say that I went to uh, your session yesterday and there were only women presenting and that was amazing. Right, the most enjoyment I had at the conference was going to the Fine Arts Museum in Boston. I had studied art for a few years in high school and seeing the real Watson the Shark, John Copley's artwork, seeing the real thing was, was quite amazing. The coolest thing I saw was a talk about the intestinal tract of uh, the rats. So they pulled the rat guts out and filmed it contracting. Uh, just pretty nasty, but pretty cool. <laughs> One of the invited or award lectures on fish movement and looking at fish scales and shark scales and how that affects like what happens with the fluid around them. Getting like that, like getting that real experience of like being a nerd and getting to talk to other nerds about it because it's not the easiest thing to explain with that pictures and stuff. I think the coolest thing I've seen is a presentation by um, Dr. Bikani who uses these underwater vehicles that go to depths of a thousand meters to do PIV and trace particles and look at how flow goes around organisms. Fantastic. What is your favorite non-dimensional number and what does it represent? I have to go with the, the bond number, gravity over surface tension. I think my favorite non-dimensional number is the third number, which uh, explains the inertial effects of an object against gravity. I'm taking an animal locomotion class, and it's how uh, we compared animals of different like masses and sizes. Probably the clay, because I'm most familiar with that. I'm gonna have to say the Peclet number. So it's related to my work. It's the Peclet number, which usually means convection over diffusion. I have to go with the Struhall number, which is the ratio of um, frequency of eddy formation behind a bluff body uh, with the flow's velocity. I'm gonna have to say it's the Reynolds number. Uh, Reynolds number is nominally a balance of how fast your flow is moving, how much inertia you have compared to the amount of, of energy you're losing to friction. All of fluids is described by some really complicated equations, and the Reynolds number is to take that complicated equation and break it down into really manageable chunks. So whether you're working on jet planes or working on bacteria swimming, the part of fluid mechanics you're working on is defined by your Reynolds number, and it's a really nice way to slice up everything that is, that's going on here at this conference. My favorite non-dimensional number is the Wamersley number, mostly because it's fun to say. It represents um, kind of pulsatile effects of flow versus kind of stickiness. So it's very close to Reynolds' number, except we're only considering pulsatile flow versus almost a steady flow.